someone who loves America and promotes America first and is a patriot is my great friend joining us is Judy Shelton, senior fellow at the Independent Institute and a former economic advisor to President Trump and me. Judy, um, I just, I, I, this, this stuff, this federal, that's not why we were going to talk, not what we were going to talk about. I want to get to the Fed in a minute. But this, uh, you know, Linus Khan woman is driving me crazy because big is not always bad, but basically they hate capitalism, they hate free markets, they do like socialism, they're strangling American business, which itself is inflationary. I mean, I know I'm probably a little too outspoken on this subject. I'm no expert about these video games, although I think they're ruining our kids. But the fact is, big is not bad. What happened to consumer welfare? Wasn't that always the standard we used? These people are coming in trying to change all that. Well, I, I don't think you, you misspeak at all. I think you're very well-spoken, and oh. you, you lay it out beautifully, the right prescription, everything you said, everything aimed at increasing supply-side solutions, increasing a productive economy. I mean, that's really the glory of free market capitalism, and it allows people to be productive and to be innovative and creative. And I don't understand a government attitude that puts targets on the backs of a big business and really punishes success. So I think your approach uh, is right from an economic point of view, but also in terms of political philosophy. And I think it's just better for the human spirit. Well, thank you, Judy. You know what? Your point, punishing success, I should have put that in to the riff. I, I often do it because that's right. There's a difference between rewarding success and punishing success, and the Biden ideology is essentially to punish success. Now, Judy, turning to these inflation numbers, uh, you know, we're still running 7.5% uh, wholesale prices. I don't think the CPI next week is going to be much better. The Fed is trying to smash down the economy, and um, it sure doesn't look like it's working. Well, in a way, um you have to think of what the Fed strategy was before COVID. They used to be very upset that they couldn't push inflation up from 1% to 2%, their target. So they wanted inflation to be higher. And that, that kind of finesse is worthy of central planning in itself. But they were using the tools at that time of uh, massive purchases, trillions, purchases of government debt, and, um, and, and they felt that if they had interest rates at near zero, that would be a way to increase inflation. Well, it didn't really work. So now they think by reversing those same tools, this time letting the, the debt roll off slowly and jacking up interest rates very high, that somehow that's going to bring down inflation of 7.7 .7 down to that 2% target. So I don't think the tools are nearly as effective as the Fed would have you believe. Well, your article in the journal, Who's to Blame for the High Cost of Living, you make some great points about the fiscal. I'm thinking fiscal inflation. I'm thinking welfare inflation. I'm thinking transfer payment inflation. And I'm thinking about transfer payments, right. which have ballooned, as you point out, and no workfare requirements, Judy Sheldon. So the labor force is actually shrinking. Actually, the heart of the labor force, I've said this before, Nick Eberstadt of AEI, uh, Bill Bennett drew attention to it on cultural matters. Um, what is it, 7 million people at least between 25 and 54, which is prime working age. That not only are they unemployed, Judy, they're not even looking for work. Now, I would say that's inflationary. Well, there, there's a reason for that. Well, that, that new book by Senator Phil Graham yes. really uh -huh. looks at the impact of all the subsidies and, and the food stamps and the refundable tax credits and all of the fiscal transfer payments that have made it so that an American household can earn the equivalent of a $45,000 level of income, non-taxable, by not working. So I really think the problem, and, and here the Fed keeps looking at the labor market, but the federal government is competing against the private sector. When you set the bar, at that level, then you are forcing the private sector to raise wages because a person very logically might say, why should I work mm. if I can live fairly comfortably? So I think it's, it's really 
Um, that's what worries me. Until we get that under control and we quit paying people not to work, um, I think the Fed's approach of trying to kill demand is, is just going to keep, keep proving fruitless, because the real answer goes back to the formula you laid out. We want to increase supply. And growth itself is not inflationary. It's a way you increase economic output. And high employment itself is not inflationary. It's how you get people to be productive. And, and, and they're increasing the size of the pie instead of concentrating in this redistributionist way on sort of a socializing of having the government collect national income and then send it back out the way the government would allocate it. I think we're a lot better off letting market price signals tell us what the cost of loanable funds should be. And that should be the way the Fed operates, not just trying to kill off businesses and increase pressure on people who do have jobs by somehow magically um, destroying only the jobs they weren't going to take anyway. If you go with the Fed all the way with their formula, they really will have to increase unemployment. That was the only way in the old days that people would then not have the money to spend. Now they're going to get the money anyway. Mm. So it's not like the Paul Volcker approach to fighting inflation. No, I mean, look, at we, we need incentives. After tax incentives, we need after regulatory incentives to work, produce, invest, right, to take risks. And as you said, we need to reward success, not punish it. The Fed shouldn't be there to destroy the economy in the name of fighting inflation. They should, that's, not, that's not what there's. The Fed should keep, you've, said, you've written this for 25, 35, 40. The Fed should just keep this, the currency value stable, okay? And then let the economy unleash. The free market could do the rest. Yes, right. Yes, a stable <laughs> monetary it. foundation would I'm, let it work. I'm pulling my hair out. I don't have much hair, but I'm pulling my hair out. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and anyway, I, I think these, uh, I don't know, these, these uh, games that these kids play is probably ruining them anyway, but uh, that's for another segment. Judy Shelton, Patriot, America First. You're terrific. Thanks ever so much.